All right, welcome. We are going to begin. We have currently six people here in the live recording. We're going to record this, obviously, so we can replay it. I'll post it back in the Patreon for all the patrons to rewatch. <gasps> I have so much to share with you today. So this is going to be a big download. Basically, <laughs> it's going to be a big one. And I'm going to have to start first with nonverbal code transfer with you guys, and then we're going to get into the verbal stuff and a little more physical activity, even some physical work. And then we're going to do some writing work. And this is kind of the order of things that I've been doing it in the trainings last month. I did the similar thing. This month's codes are about dreams, not only daydreaming, dreaming, but also your heart's dreams and your soul's wishes and the dreams of your soul, your dreams dream. So we're going to get into that. Well, there's another addition. Welcome. So the first thing I'm going to do in this call is we're going to do 20 breaths together. First thing, and we're going to do 10 first through our nose, and then we're going to do 10 more out of our mouth exclusively. This is going to help regulate our systems. And also, like I said, I'm going to be able to transfer in a way these nonverbal codes to you in the beginning of this session. And then we're going to kind of, I would say, flush them out after. So this should be about an hour. And again, I hope you have something to write with. And I hope that you're hydrated. And if not, get some water, get a piece of paper and a pen. And we're going to start the breathing. Okay, so... Again, like I said, we're going to do 20 breaths. The first 10 are going to be out of your nose only, and then the next 10 are going to be out of your mouth. So let's begin. And I just would like to preface this with your own soul accepting through the filter of your divinity, all that serves and releasing all that does not out of what I'm sharing today. And I hope that this this is just going to give you the clarity that you need to continue achieving your dreams in life, of course. And next month, we're going to do the theme of cleanse specifically. So <laughs> because a big way to activate your dreams is to actually clear out your vessel from any sort of things that are distorting your light from traveling through and from you traveling in and out of your body while you astral travel when you sleep. Okay, so first. Let's begin with the 10 breaths out of the nose and just sort of receiving these codes from me. Let's do it. So let's begin. First breath in the nose. On the last one, we're going to hold. Hold, 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 hold. Gather up all that extra chi and push it out through your feet. Hold, hold, hold. Okay, in through the mouth.
big one and the last one. Hold, 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 hold. And now breathe it all the way out. You wanna hold on the out breath, hold, empty yourself, empty yourself, empty yourself. Good. Put your hand on your heart, breathe again, all of that good stuff in. Let it go. Shake your hands. Great. So excellent. We've just synchronized ourselves. Good job, everybody. I know that's pretty common in these sessions, but we got to do it. Next thing I'm going to have you do is we're going to do some somatic, just some body releasing of your tension because I want you to get more into this rhythm if you haven't already of actually releasing trauma physically through shaking your body before you actually sleep because we have to do a lot of processing and catching up in our sleep because we don't do this during the daytime. So I'm gonna have you first work with your arms to get you comfortable. And then we're gonna start working it into the rest of our body. And we're gonna shake out the excess from this week, from this month, from the last time that we gathered together, the last 18th. Just really push, push, push it out of your arms. Good. Your arms are probably getting tired now. So that's a good sign. So now I'm going to have you start to get, hopefully you're standing, but get up if you haven't gotten up yet and get up on your toes. Okay. Tippy toes back down to the ground. We did this last time, but I want you just to kind of jump or bounce on your feet, bounce with your ankles. This is going to be more releasing with your ankles. Okay. So we're going to move the ankles around and just kind of Bend your knees and make move and roll your ankles around and keep pushing your heel on the floor. My floor is like cracking for some reason over here. I'm going to move. But ankles and knees and just start shaking your legs out. Can't really see my legs, but start shaking till your whole hip is moving. Wherever you're catching. Start wiggling with your body a little more, get engaging your hips and your spine and your shoulders a little more. Again, keep going with the arms because that's basically where we release all our energy and our feet. So just keep going. We're just gonna keep shaking. Obviously I can't see you, but I hope you're following along and shaking this energy out. My limbs are getting nice and activated right now. So I'm just gonna keep shaking. My legs, just lift up your leg and really kick and start really kicking. Kick that energy out. <laughs> kick, 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 kick. Shake, shake, shake. Next side, kick, 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 kick. Let's get that stuff out. And let's make this a routine before you guys sleep more is start shaking and get that excess out before you have to process it in your sleep. And it starts stagnating in your body. A lot of us have to be have to catch up on our sleep because before we woke up, we did not get enough. We did not get enough from basically. And that was the by design. That was by design. So it's all right. We just have to catch up on ourselves a little bit. And so if you've been sleeping more lately, don't worry. You're integrating the, the self before you woke up. You're integrating that into your new self, into the reparented version of you. This version of you doesn't really have a voice. <laughs> it, it simply is, I want to say, literally your soul. So we're just going to make room for the soul to flood into the body by allowing what's no longer ours to flood out of the body through the shaking movements. Good job, everybody. Okay, so let's just do with the head now. Roll the head around, get your neck movement here. Obviously, be very gentle with your neck, listen. But I want you to start rolling your neck around. And any other body part that wants to move along with it, just allow, please, just allow. Just allow it to shake out. Good job. Okay, I want you to rub your hands together. We're gonna start building some heat with this movement.
Okay, if you've been rubbing your hands, now switch directions that you've been rubbing them. Keep swaying around, feel that energy. It might be building, it might be, you might be feeling it coming out the top of your head a little more now. That's good, that's what we want. We're basically trying to activate your toroidal field and keep it healthy. So you should be feeling it coming out the top of your head and you should be feeling some sensation now in your feet because we were stomping and activating our ankles. Okay, so trauma release. Okay, so last thing I want you to do before we're gonna do more discussion and more of the mental body and emotional body work next is I'm gonna have you do uh, a bend at the hips and bend and release. So if you can touch your toes, for example, that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna extend your spine basically. So just reach over, reach over and reach down and engage your whole every vertebra, every vertebrate, reach all the way down, bend your knees to touch the ground. And then slowly roll yourself back up, every vertebra, one on another, start stacking them. Shake your hips a little bit, do one more time. Release it all the way to the ground. Put your hands on the ground, give it back to Gaia. Say thank you. Thank you for grounding my excess energy. And release, release. Good, good. Love it. So in today's discussion and all the downloads that I'm going to be sharing with you before we start doing your own dream journal, uh, an exercise with your own dream journal, or, you know, if you have not even started your dream journal, like I said, just a blank piece, we're going to start today. We're starting your dream journal. If you have not started, I'm sorry, but I have to be the one to be like, you're starting your dream journal. It has to happen. Uh, and that's why you're here basically. So let's get on that. Let's take it seriously. People don't take, I would say, as seriously the role of being that conduit and actually prophesizing and getting intact with that dream realm, which is kind of just slightly ahead of us in time. <laughs> and it's necessary that we are doing that work it, entirely. It's entirely necessary right now. And I want to say it's for the children's sake. And we're going to get into that. But just trust me on that. If that resonates with you, whatever, if it doesn't, okay. But that's the download for right this second. But we're going to be focusing on you in this, obviously, and your progress. So first thing I'm going to ask you, this is sort of the prompt question that kind of was unexpected with this, but we're going to go there because we need to go back in time kind of when you were young first. So obviously a lot of us remember dreams when we were children. Most of us do. A lot of us also remember nightmares and unpleasant dreams when we were little. And so we also remember feeling uncomfortable, feeling for the first time competition, feeling lack, feeling yourself comparing yourself to other people. And this sort of inspiration is what catalyzed you to desire in a way, to dream yourself something that you saw somebody else experiencing that activated you, that inspired you. So we're going to do a bit of a soul retrieval right now first, and I'm going to prompt you with asking, what did they have that you wanted? Do you remember the first time as a child you saw another child, likely? having some sort of experience, even an object or a relationship that you wanted for yourself, that it, it was something you didn't have, but it, it inspired you to desire that thing. I want you to try and tap back into your old yourself as a child. And let's think about that for a minute. What did you see outside of yourself when you were a child that inspired you to want more, to want something outside of your lived experience? It could have been a child who had whatever it was, 
some they had a not a better lunch than you did at school or they had a better uh family vacation for example or they had more siblings than you or they had more a toy that you wanted all of the sudden they had perhaps a you know a family that you wanted instead or an animal or a pet or even a toy like i said what's another thing that could be even just status and popularity and likability I want you to really think about what this is. And if you have your pen and paper, I want you to write that down. Write down some of the things that you remember being inspired to desire at, by just being around your peers. So I'm going to write down something for myself because I didn't actually do this. So Excellent. One sec. Okay. I know that might not have been an, uh, that might not have been <laughs> what you're expecting us to start with, but okay. So now I want to picture you. I want you to close your eyes and picture that version of you. Picture how little you were, what your environment was in that you were in first inspired. My example, of course, was you know with your classmates. But it could have been like a cousin or an older sibling. It could have been a neighbor that was inspiring to you. And it was the first time that you desired what someone else had. Okay. Now, again, we're going to do a little bit of shaking and trauma release around that tension that you perhaps felt. Either if you have never ever, ever actually actualized those dreams and you're remembering now like, wow, I wanted that and I never actually got it. But I remember feeling pain and, and, and uh, competition with these people. So we're going to work through that pain and that illusion of lack. And as well as the, I want to say, manufactured competition and selfishness honestly that was bred into our society which caused a lot of this disconnection between resources and and love and people so we're going to release that first and i'm feeling that in the most in my hips so you can just uh shake your legs again and just kind of move your body and wiggle it out and i'm going to ask you to wiggle your hips a little bit you know like a fish <laughs> like you're swimming like a fish <laughs> and just Imagine that little kid, imagine a little you, and just release that pain first. We're going to release that pain. Stomp your feet on the ground a little. I want you to hit your heels on the floor one after the other, like I'm doing alternatively, and just send that energy back into the earth, back into your roots. As you've become a much more, a larger tree, a more established person, you've achieved a lot of things that you have desired. That's why you've survived so long. We're going to release that. We do receive what our heart's true desires are. That is the truth. We're integrating that truth. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Just sit in that, in that post movement buzz for a second, feel into your body. Take a big breath and release that. Release that. Hold on to your heart. We're going to talk to our inner child. Dear inner child, I love you. I hear you. I remember you. And I keep you with me now as I continue to achieve our dreams and expand and grow our own ability to dream and achieve in the sleeping world and in the waking world. We are doing the work together now to weave together our truest potential. 
And so we may inspire others to dream with what we are achieving now. Nice, good activation, excellent. So I'm gonna have you push that energy down now from your heart, push it down and just rest it over your belly, over your kind of your hip bones and your lower belly, kind of around your belly button, like so, your womb <laughs> of creation or your lower dantian, basically. Again, the belly, it holds a lot of our potential, of our of our stored energy. So we're pushing all that energy build up back into our storage. Good feelings. We're good. We're storing now good feelings in our body from this feeling of breakthrough, this actualization, this choice you've made now today with this group and the energy of this group to invest in your dreams. You are worthy of these dreams. You're worthy of the desires that you had. They were yours and they, they happened for a reason. Nice. Okay, great. Push it all the way down, all the way down to your feet. Look down at the floor. Rest your eyes for a second. Let that energy ground. It's taking me a second here. If you need to bend your knees a little bit and kind of go into a squat right now, just to really like sink into that that we just did, let's you won't be able to see me, but I'm gonna do the same. So I'm gonna kneel. I'm gonna go all the way down and squat for a second. Oh. Just push down through the bottom of your tailbone and into the backs, your heels into the floor and just breathe down like you're planting a seed of this now into the earth. I accept myself. I accept myself. I accept myself. I am wanted. I am encouraged. I am supported. Nice. Good. This is a good activation. Excellent. How are we doing for time? Oh my gosh, it's flying by. Okay. Here we go. So let's talk about protection. So when it comes to dreaming, obviously there is there is the sleep work, the dreaming we do when we sleep. There's a dreaming that we do in the day when we're awake. And then there is the dreaming that occurs in a way in your heart, almost in an instant. Sometimes these dreams are born. And these are, this is the sacred vault here that we're going to finish with. So first, when it comes to protection, I learned a few skills just tonight. I literally was just at a conference uh, the conference is all weekend. I got to go there tomorrow and the next day. But today I learned a few extra skills that was deliberately, I deliberately recorded so we can, I can share them with you today. So we're going to first refer to your auric body and your, your electromagnetic field. So how you boost your electromagnetic field, really easy. You just get your heart rate up, get your heart rate up. Like I, I've suggested so many times is do a hundred jumping jacks or 50 jumping jacks and your auric field is going to be pumping. It's going to be much stronger. The second thing that you need is really high quality water. And I cannot recommend enough that you make this your number one priority. Uh, I have a water store in town that does the Kangen water and the reverse osmosis, and they're re-energizing. They're, they're basically charging the water, but it has a negative charge. And in a way, and it's it's not acidic, it's a basic, it's a basic water. And this water is going to be essential basically for also charging your field and keeping your body from oxidizing itself and aging right away. So 
if you want to achieve your dreams, we got to keep you healthy. We got to keep you strong and and your field very, very, very active and thick, especially for your dreaming at night and working in the in the night work when you're, <laughs> I would say, a little more vulnerable. So the protection. First thing, you can refer to your auric field, your toroidal field. You can refer to it as something. Uh, the woman I learned from tonight, she refers to it as the halo. And she commands her halo to fortify, to clear, and whatever else that she wants it to do. And just give it a name, give it a reference, and command more so over your your electromagnetic field of what you want it to do. And then you will also receive, well, I can't do that because I'm tired or I can't do that because I'm hungry or I can't do that because I'm thirsty. And you'll get some of that information back and you need to replenish yourself with all of the electrons and the, and the materials basically that you need to keep the flow going. So next thing I would recommend once we, that's the non-physical well, <laughs> that's a non-physical field. And like I said, you can refer to it as your halo. Then, of course, the water is the other layer. And more recently, also, I learned frankincense is an excellent tool as well to protect you when you are sleeping and in overall. So I put some frankincense oil in some water into a spray bottle like a mister or whatever and i've been misting my crown and the bottoms of my feet and over the last few days and i've just been spraying myself over and over as often as i need to just to basically help me clear out in a way the free radicals and the intensity and, and raise the vibration the frequency of my body as well as constantly making sure that I'm in an alkaline state. Usually when you're not feeling well, it's because you're becoming acidic. I learned this a long time ago. What, what creates acidity in us? Um, it can be animal products and sugars create uh, acidity in the body, as well as your cycles, women. Your acidity levels will shift during your cycles also because the hormonal shifts. So like I said, really, really try and get yourself connected with some sort of machinery that creates properly the alkaline and structured water. Put that as number one priority, honestly, if you can. So with this, there's also some no-nos that I've learned when it comes to protection that I want to share. One funny one is dream catchers. If you have a dream catcher in your bedroom, I would recommend do not have it in there. I would recommend actually you keep your dream catchers outside of your house and have them more as protectors outside of your home because they capture dreams. They will capture energy and they can actually block you in a way from achieving your dreams. Another thing that I would recommend you do is be sure that your sleeping area is as clean and clear as possible of technology, period, period. Nothing even plugged into the walls because that's pulling current. Get everything unplugged in your room, get all the technology out and all, all of the piles of clothes and extra clothing. Uh, this is something that even my own home, we still struggle with, but we, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to say I'm perfect at this, but these things capture energy. They cause a lot of, they cause a lot of interruption to the flow, especially clothing. They absorb a lot. They actually also absorb a lot from your daytime and will continue to kind of reinform the room with all of this old stain and dirty energy. So be sure to store your dirty clothes in another room that you're not sleeping in before you're washing them or whatever. It's going to make a huge difference. Also, when it comes to crystals, there's a lot of crystals that you can work with that actually can cause a little bit too much because crystals are alive. Crystals have their own field and we do want to raise the vibration. You want to raise the vibration of where you're sleeping, but you don't want to confuse the field, your own auric field too much 
and have all these influences talking and chatting at you when you're in, in those in-between states. It's a much easier to perceive a lot of chatter from the crystals. One I do recommend though, that if you're having any sort of issue is lipidolite. I'm sorry, I didn't grab mine. I might have to, but it is a light purple stone with some like pinkish and white flecks in it. It's actually becoming quite popular. I have two pieces. Lipidolite has been excellent. You can put it in your pillow or somewhere nearby where you are sleeping as a way to help you basically sleep soundly. But best case scenario, you don't need any other informants. You do not need the crystals around you. You should be able to be your own crystal with your high, with your charge and your auric field nice and nice and he healthy. So we need your need you to be doing a cardio exercise every day. And even before bed, you, like I said, shake it out, get your heart rate going, release, do it outside of the bedroom too. Great idea to do it in the shower before bed or outside of your house, doing that trauma release or in another room than you're sleeping in as well with a door or window open. So that can just it can sort of dissipate. Hold on one second. I'm getting something. Okay, excellent. So I want to mention also, if you have any power outlets, like I said, near your bed on the left or the right of your head, which is very common, or even right behind your head on the wall, I would invite you to put something over it that is like plastic in a way, or uh, we creatively put, I think, a stuffed animal in front of one of them because it's actually made of plastic, the, the, the stuff inside of it. And so it, it actually can sort of absorb and sort of block that energy as well you know even the safety guards for children that are little plastic that can put in the plugs that'll help because the there is entities that can actually travel through these uh these outlets i'll be honest it's true and i've experienced it multiple times especially with one outlet in our bedroom and we've had to do what we had to do we we saged and and palo santoed and uh chaparraled and sweet grassed the area and then we placed our guardian stuffed animal over it and it actually really helped really helped to basically block that energy so whatever you got to do whatever you could take from what i said rearrange the area obviously keep your sheets clean keep your body clean when you're sleeping as well and I want to say allow yourself to go back to sleep as well. A lot of us um, are actually nervous, anxious people. And when we wake up, a lot of people can't go back to sleep. And that is usually where the richest dream world is, is in those moments when you go back to sleep in the morning. That's almost always when the best dream time happens. You kind of get into the right headspace. But I would recommend having your dream journal in your bathroom because some of us use the restroom in the middle, middle of the night. And that's also a time also when you're becoming slightly coherent where you can write down just anything, write anything that you remember, any single symbol, object, person, feeling, even anything that you can pull from your dream state, write it down. And in the morning, again, after you've woken up, maybe after you've fallen asleep again, hopefully, and we can work our way up to that. But if you don't have a problem with that, just know that I'm encouraging you to keep doing that because that's where a lot of the codes are being delivered is in that time and in that, that brainwave pattern. And write down or draw every single thing you can remember. I'm now doing like two pagers some nights because I've been working on this all this month to prepare just to see if I can unlock any more information through the practice. And yeah, that would be my other recommendation. So 
So we did clearing. You're going to do clearing. You can also have a selenite wand and clear your auric field with that. That'll help clear as well, bring it down. But the ideal is that you keep your personal charge healthy and, and thick, I want to say. It's almost like a thickness to your field when you have a healthy charge, internal charge. So the sleep work especially is is helpful for those of you who are health practitioners because as well or you know reiki masters whatever it is if you're doing energy work and healings with other people you're going to take on their their field you're going to take on their energy and of course we do bathing like i said frankincense your use your selenite wand of course but ideally what you do as a healer is we do take that on and process things for other people because whatever you do take on is something for you the rest of it will just repel right off you you won't even notice but do some things do stick as usual and also as a practitioner myself i often give myself 24 hours after someone books with me so i can sleep after they have consciously engaged me and consciously given me permission to begin working with them as a healer through booking with me through paying me through giving me that permission and it allows me then in the in my dream time to begin innocently i don't go in there with i don't go in with any sort of i want to say intention when it comes to this i just in a way i'm more of a receptive dreamer and that's not always everybody's thing. We can get into that for a second, but I am more of a receptive dreamer. And when it comes to the client work, like I said, I like to sleep on it before I actually see the person. And oftentimes through that 24 hours or whatever it is, in my waking and sleeping state, I'm going to be getting information and codes that I have no idea have anything to do with this, the client that I'm going to be working with. But it's essential that I open up that space and allow myself to begin dreaming and processing with this person's energy because a lot of the stuff that I will get in dreams will just come up goodness <laughs> will just come up just like a burp clearing burp <laughs> will just come up in our session and I will be shocked and excited that I had synchronistically been shown these themes before and it's very validating also for the client to know that you're genuinely connecting with their energy field. You're genuinely sharing this intimate moment and this healing together. We're working together as a team. And then it also allows, it also allows an easier release between each other afterward because you actually did so much work together that your souls are satisfied and you can part ways and it'll allow quicker the space to be cleared and for a new client or whatever to come in and begin working with you as well. So we have this deep recovery that we are able to do during our sleep, like I was saying earlier. And this deep recovery is a major theme for a lot of us right now, because like I said, before we woke up, a lot of us weren't getting the proper sleep. We were basically being, we were basically slaves. Most of us were slaves. We were not in control of our own schedule. And that is a recipe for disaster, which was intended. So we're, we're fighting back against that generationally, at least the last 150 years, unfortunately, when it comes to um, more so the English speaking colonies, especially that was a big, a big one. So we are achieving deep recovery. So I want you to say that out loud to yourself. We are achieving deep recovery when we sleep, when we dream, and when we are awake. Recovery can be done when you're awake or asleep, but it's extremely effective when you're asleep. And there's certain levels of recovery you just cannot get when you're awake due to basically our biology. So every animal gets at least puts half of their brain to sleep <laughs> at at, at night to get that deep replenishing recovery. Most of you know that's when the cerebral spinal fluid begins to flow and clear out all the stagnant uh, particles and stuff that are around your brain tissue. So you really do need to make sure that you're getting that sleep. Another great way also to protect your field 
is to play whale noises is coming through for me. I didn't write this down and I don't do that, but I have the intention to. And bringing whale noises into the home more, as well as to clear and sort of help with the vibrational frequencies. Big one that's just hitting me right now. That was not intended. So that one <laughs> straight from the whales. Okay, so with this deep recovery, you're actually going to be accessing your DNA. You're going to be accessing the DNA memory of your past lives. And this is also a major reason why we must continue using the dream space because it's a really effective way to clear the trauma of our past lives in a safe, in a safe way, in a safe environment. This if you wake up and you feel like you were working all night, that you were dreaming of all this intense stuff and you were clearing, you will need recovery from your dream work. And like I said, if you're waking up first and you already have a bunch of dreams, part of it is acknowledging it is writing it down. That will clear, help your subconscious mind be able to release that trauma and give it back to your conscious mind to kind of reason with it understand it and learn from it and actually use it now progressively in your healing practices and your teaching work it will bring it to the conscious mind and allow it to basically allow your subconscious to be freed of that that turmoil so these past lives many of us actually were more involved in their dream work in our past lives and it was more of a attuned experience that we were having and it was a superpower and it still is to a very deep degree and there were there are me, there are herbs herbs basically for many cultures that help with this process also help initiate dream time help initiate this deeper processing skill that we have by relaxing your nervous system and also feeding you in a way the neurochemical building blocks so you actually can conjure way more vivid imagery in your mind and so on and lucidity it helps a ton so we really need to keep our gut health super good so you can keep creating those very healthy hormones and 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 chemicals so your brain can be happy and get fresh chemicals and so on for your next day and for you continuing to live in this dream as well. So with past lives, I want to say if you feel like you have a lot of density from your past lives and you haven't been dreaming, we really want to connect you with your dream world again. So how we can do that is through some ingredients. Like I said, the herbal remedies, if you didn't know, first, of course, I said the water, you need to get yourself some proper water that's clean, clear energized, structured, and it has great voltage. Then we're going to work on, you can work with mugwort, very inexpensive. You can buy it in bulk. You can put that in tea. I have a bamboo tea, loose tea holder that I got online. It's made out of bamboo. It's like a little bamboo net. Would recommend for your tea because tea bags, most of them are made out of plastic and buying these herbs, most of them aren't in tea bags. So you're gonna need something for that. <laughs> so mugwort, blue lotus is another one. It came up again today. Egypt absolutely adored blue lotus. And I'm not trying to push you into extreme DMT trips. That's not my key, that's not my goal here. But we definitely have to percolate a little DMT. If you aren't dreaming, then you've got to start somewhere. Valerian is also another one I'd recommend that you get and add that in. And also one I would recommend is moving away from any sort of stimulants at all and stop taking stimulants. Stop. And if you need a little kick once in a while, I may suggest cacao, the good stuff. And I also will suggest um, green tea, jasmine green tea. I'm very, very watered down though, and very small doses. I only drink like a mini cup we have to get back to many, many cups of things because we in North America, everybody's drinking out of a mug and that's a lot of fluid. That's actually like your whole stomach worth of fluid. 
And that's a lot for your body to process. Most of it isn't going to get absorbed. You really don't have to keep dosing yourself as hard as you are with a lot of stuff, especially stimulants, especially. So we're going to reduce your stimulants by a ton, if possible, completely reduce them. And we're going to get back to natural levels. Again, an apple is also a really good stimulant. I can't even eat a whole apple. It's too much. If you need that little kick as well, an apple will do amazing. We're going to then move into the mushroom realm and we're going to need you to begin rebuilding your neural network using the mycelial superpowers. So I'd recommend you get fruiting body mushroom mixes that have like lion's mane, cordyceps, turkey tail, pretty much as much variety of mushrooms that you can get. Make sure it's the fruiting body instead of just like because some of, they're basically some of them will cheap you out and not give you the actual active mushroom fruiting body. And they give you like, like a crappier version of what, whatever biomass is going to be what they're trying to sell you. So be careful with that. And also I want to say psychedelic mushrooms as well as an honorable mention, it will help rebuild your gut and your chemicals. Again, at very, very, very small doses, literally just grinding it into a dust and just sprinkling it, like just sprinkling it just whoop, into your, into your morning tea. So more so I would recommend that you begin doing teas that are helping for clearing your liver and your kidneys. This is going to be huge because we're going to be doing cleansing next month, but I need you to start cleansing your liver and your kidneys. So that's, that's, um, dandelion root get some dandelion tea and have that as your morning tea have we're going to clear out our organs basically and prepare more for cleansing as well so next thing of course is the parasite cleansing that's the last thing so if you haven't started yet i would recommend that you go on amazon and buy two bottles of scram right away and one bottle of, and I forget what it's called, but it's, it's a magnesium rich oxygenating, basically uh, supplement that helps your body basically almost inflate a little bit and release. If you have a slower moving digestive system, mine's fast. If you know Ayurvedic medicine, you may want to do a test online, Ayurvedic medicine, to figure out what your dosha is or your temperament of your body. You could be a kapha, which is the slowest. And so you will need some supplement to help move your digestional tract quickly because when you start parasite cleansing, the die off of these things, you will taste, you will smell it on yourself. When something dies, you will smell it all of a sudden and you'll be like, what, what was that? it's death. You're literally smelling death. And a lot of them also have like an alcoholy almost release. So it's, you must be able to clear the stuff out of your system as well. So we can talk more about that next month, but if you want to get started on that, I would recommend starting. Now we're going to move into, and of course, journaling. So journaling is definitely on there. That's going to keep going. So now we're going to move into daydreams really quickly. We have a few more minutes and then I'm going to have you do a little bit of work in your dream journal. I just got to get this information out and these codes out. So the daydreaming work that you're doing is also extremely important. And this is your most purposeful, I would say, dream work and astral work. When you sleep, uh, some say that you leave out of the bottoms of your feet. So it's recommended also you can put some frankincense and like coconut oil or whatever carrier oil on your free feet. I actually just mix it with water, like I said, but you can have it on your feet and it'll help have like a higher vibrational barrier for you to ask to travel in and out of your body. I've been trying it. I've never had too many issues because in a way in the dream space, I've established in a way, my own guardian status in a way. And I have my guardian angels, my team, and I go into sleep very confident. I do not go into sleep when I, I'm fearful ever. Sleep is my favorite time of the day. I love going to sleep. It's my favorite. 
And so I'm grateful for that. And the daydreaming aspect has become a bigger part of what I love about living as well. And this is, again, like I said, the more intentional work with your astral work. This is when you're meditating or when you're not, the, your eyes are open or closed, but you're meditating, you're thinking, you're processing, and you're thinking about your dreams and your goals and what you want to achieve. You're also thinking about areas on the planet and your past and your future. You're traveling through time in these daydreams like that. Your consciousness is capable of it. And I just would like to recommend during these hours of the waking time, give yourself those hours of awake dreaming every day. It could be most likely your morning hours. I get up before most of my family. And if I cannot fall back asleep and begin that dreaming process, I begin doing it when I am awake and I write notes, I write ideas, I cry I, I process a lot of emotion in that time and it's essential. So if you're not giving yourself that time in the day, I'd recommend if you can, please give yourself that daydreaming time. It will be worth it. That is your gift. That is the gift of our lives. And then you will begin to, your brainwaves will begin to speed up as the sun begins to rise in the sky begins to activate our brainwaves more and you begin moving into alpha and beta brainwave states. The beta is where we're doing stuff. We're doing stuff, we're getting stuff done. That'll be more in the afternoon as well. And then you start going back down and going into slower brainwave states. So you'll notice your brainwaves beginning to shift in accordance to the sun when you begin doing this. If you haven't already, during noon is also another powerful time of astral travel. All the animals in my house go to sleep during around noon to one o'clock when there is the most direct sunlight. And I assume it's because it is a portal and a gateway as well. And you can integrate a lot of information and codes and healing during that time. It's also extremely dense and powerful energy. So sometimes slipping out of the body and being your spirit self allows the body just to rest and recuperate during that time instead of fighting back through the intensity of the sunlight, which a lot of us end up doing. Humans usually start eating instead of when they get tired, they usually start to eat. So if you find yourself starting to get tired and you want to eat, maybe just give yourself water and attempt to take a nap as well. If you can, but don't let yourself nap too long, like give yourself like a 20 minute timer. I would say more so maybe like a 50 minute timer because it sometimes takes you about 10 to 20 minutes to actually fall asleep. So maybe give yourself like an hour or 50 minutes. So you're not like, oops, you're not too far out. You don't go too far, but the sun will continue going down and you'll get kicked out of the energy system and onto something else usually. So want to just encourage you to engage in that daydreaming time as well as napping during those high noon hours. In some countries, that's just what they do. <laughs> and North America is just being treated differently. But in Italy, they have naps in the middle of the day. Like they have those longer breaks during the high sun times because of the brainwave state and the dream state that it causes really. So get deeper into that. Work more with those hours of the day allow yourself to be more receptive and also projective during your daydreaming time. That's when you really can start actualizing and, and seeking and traveling through your ideas and working through those ideas. And then in your actual resting, recuperating time, you won't have to do as much of that work. You can actually recover, slough off and release all of your dead cells, grow new cells, digest and do the parasite cleanse. Make sure your body keeps digesting and moving that stuff out when you're sleeping. So final thing we're talking about today that kind of brings it back to the beginning is the soul dreaming the soul's dream, the soul's desires that spark in us and become our new obsession. And, you know, these things happen. Most of us experience that. If you're not getting proper sleep, 
and you aren't doing your journal work, this is going to be a chaotic experience for you. And you may have been having a really hard time manifesting your dreams and you're getting a lot of resistance and receiving a lot of pushback. And again, it's because your own auric field is not strong enough. And we basically have to keep your cardio up, keep you getting deep, deep rest at, sleep, at night, which means there's no lights. There's no lights piercing it into your eyelids. There's no electronics. There's no piles of stuff in the room. The room is dedicated, your dedicated sleep chamber, and you, you don't do anything active or crazy in your bedroom. That is only for sleep. That is only for your travels out of the body and so on, and your deep recovery, where the body itself as an animal, in a way, as, an, as a beast, knows distinctly that it is safe, it is restful and is undisturbed. So make that your priority, like fight tooth and nail for it. If you have to get that in your life, it's essential. And you don't have to just take my word for it. If you, if you need a male, maybe to also say these things, begin looking up this stuff and, and see what other people are saying just for validators I don't need to be your only teacher. Obviously, I don't care to be. Go out there and do more research about how to get yourself into deeper rest and other techniques if what I'm saying isn't enough yet. But I hope I'm giving you lots to work with. And so when it comes to your heart's desire, even those desires you had as a child, those things won't go away. Those desires won't go away. They've become you. They've become your auric field. They're replaying in your hologram over and over. So I want you to write down what it is that you desire. What is your dream? You have to write it down and own it. Own it in your, not just a feeling, but own it with the words, own it with your mind, own it with your brain, as well as your heart. Give it words, give it, give it the expression it needs and continue adding to it, continue tweaking it because the when you begin, it will begin to flow. It gives it permission to be born. It gives it permission to manifest. So I want to just use the group's energy right now on your behalf and on all of our behalfs to actualize this dream desire in your heart. So let's let's get this on to paper right now. Let's get this on to paper. So anything... Anything, I know sometimes it's hard, okay? I know it's hard sometimes, but I gotta push you today. I want you to write down, if you haven't already, what is your heart's dream right now? What has your heart been pining for? What is your dream right now? Write it down, please. Write down multiple things. Okay, you a couple extra seconds, just keep adding. Okay, good. Now I want you to write down what it's going to feel like when you achieve this dream or this feeling that you're seeking. What is it gonna feel like to you? Whatever words come to mind, okay? Write it down. Okay, 
So here's some suggestions about what I wrote down about how it's going to feel, at least. I won't tell you my dream part just because you don't need to tell people your dream. Honestly, sometimes the best thing is to not verbalize it. So we can, no one else's like opinions or whatever can like ripple the waters of your manifestation. And one thing I've also learned is when you really have a dream, you know, sometimes it helps to work with other people and you'll be guided one way or another. Some people literally cannot help themselves from sharing that dream with someone else. It just happens and it's for the good and it's for the group manifestation, which we're going to do right now. But here's some, you know, when this dream of mine on this state and this feeling that I am manifesting and I'm working to perfect in a way through my auric field and attract and properly maintain, I'm going to feel satisfied, secure, organized, calm, warm, happy, adventurous, brave as examples so if any of those words hit your list as well great i look forward if you want to tell me any of these things put it in the comments or whatever of course these feelings it might help someone else also kind of get some verbiage as well so if you go ahead if you need to i also see comments here uh nice about lipidolite excellent and and Paragard also for Paracyclans, excellent. Good, good, good. So just like, just like making a wish, just like making a wish, we're gonna do that now together. So I'm going to hold that piece of paper, hold your written manifestation against your heart chakra, against that, you know, zero point. I want you to breathe it in almost like you're breathing it right into your heart. Okay. So breathe in. Soak it in there. Soak it in there. Mm, feel the warmth. Feel the warmth. Call upon those feelings. Let's imagine now that there's no such thing as time. There's no such thing as waiting. Let's just imagine now that you've achieved this dream. And we're going to soak in those feelings of satisfaction. Like, wow, this is really what it feels like to achieve my dream. This is it. I have achieved it. It has been achieved. I achieved my dream. I achieved my dream. Excellent. So now as a group, out of the love in our hearts, if you're wanting to, intentionally, let's just work in a sort of energy bubble right now, quantumly, where you can imagine yourself, you just all like, all of a sudden you've teleported onto my beautiful little um, glorious cloud that I have a whole secret paradise on, and we're all just chilling by the lagoon together. And our feet are in the water, the manifestations of the water, our, our butts are in the sand, and there's a beautiful breeze, and we're all holding hands as well. So our feet are in the water, we're next to each other, our butts are in the sand, we're grounded, feet in the water, closing our eyes, and just feeling this communal compassion, this communal desire for not only our own dream to come true, but the dreams of other beautiful, loving service to other beings and the innocence of their inner child. I want you to feel that with each other right now. Imagine that you genuinely have people in your life right now. You maybe you've never met them, but right now in this moment, we are together. And with our combined energy and our combined field, we are perfecting, clarifying and attracting our best life. our achieved dreams and the inspiration to dream more 
and actualize as a group even grander opportunities. Not only for us, but for the generations to come, we fortify this space. We fortify the community and our connections and our compassion. These dreams will have firmer and stronger clarity and it will increase us meeting the vibration of these dreams and walking right into them as we wake up tomorrow. We are in a moment of timeline shifting. I've got the message multiple times today. This is a timeline shift. You are literally shifting your timeline right now to align with your achieved dream and dreams with the help of the group and the, our combined power. We fortify these dreams now. We live them and they will project out from our hologram as we have owned them, become them, and again, achieve them. On the quantum, they are already achieved, which is why your heart feels it, why your heart loves the, loves the idea, why your heart feels it, it's because it already exists, it's already real. We are now just aligning and raising our vibration to meet it. Now I release all doubts, pull it off, pull it over. I know they're gathering around your head space. Our heads and our minds are very strong. So pull that energy off, release it. We accept the truth in our hearts. For we are the ones that scheduled this. <laughs> We're feeling satisfied, we're feeling secure, we're feeling calm, warm, and happy, we're feeling aligned and loved by our quantum self and by our quantum community because we truly should and do want the innocent dreams of the inner children and the benevolent beings around us to be actualized because these dreams will only make all of our lives more magical. And that sparkle of achieved dreams and self-confidence that comes from it is only going to inspire others like you were once inspired to dream the first time. And you're going to be passing that, that energy on and that cycle on and people will want to dream new things because of what you were able to achieve and show others as possible. So thank you for pursuing and receiving the dreams in your life and accepting them. And also then sharing and celebrating the moments where you know you achieved a dream because that will only fortify and speed up your process in the future and make you more efficient at it where it will be just like breathing. You will be dreaming at night even of these things and they will actualize in the day. And in your, your meditation day, you'll be tuning it in even more and also receiving more dreams and more information to begin creating through your own, through our own creative energy flow. Oh, so great job. Sunlight in your heart, wonderful. Soul sparking, love that. Good job, everybody. Awesome. All right. So with that, I'm going to burn this as an intentional sort of clearing and also manifesting the magic. Like I said, clear the mental plane again, clear it out, clear it out. Good, breathe it in, clear it out. Okay, so if you have your dream journal with you, final note, open up to your last written thing 
I want you to look at the page and I want you with your pen to circle the words that specifically align with your soul and or what things you want to investigate more in your dream world. Final thing, go back through the last couple if you're only writing a few words, underline or circle the words that really resonate with your soul right now and that you wanna keep manifesting through your dream work because that's going to give your mind permission to organize itself. So please, this is the final thing. Look back in your dream journal, circle some of the words that you wrote that you really resonate with and are on the frequency that you want to align with the most in your dream time. And if you've got nothing, then I want you right now to write down, again, one thing at least that you would like to pursue in your dream work. And then one thing you would like your body to do with its healing work. And then one thing you would like your inner child to know as your adult self, whatever it is. It could be, I protect you. I hear you. I care about your dreams. We will actualize our dreams together. We will inspire more children to dream. Excellent. We did it. Good job, everybody. Excellent training, Ex excellent work. It was an honor, again, to work with you all again and again and again through all the different timelines that are collapsing right now, where we're jumping to our best timeline right now using this portal and this time and this day and the energy that we gathered as a group. You have permission to advance into a better energy, into your dream realized world, your dream realized life. And we're gonna keep going as a group. If you're interested, like I said, we're going to cleanse and we're gonna remove lower density things from our gut and from our organs and this clay, this flesh of earth that we're wrapped in. So stay tuned for that. If you need any help or more suggestions on what to take, just message me after this. I'll get to it tomorrow. But when it comes to tonight, I just want you to know that you are a divine sovereign being. Your spirit deserves just as much as anyone else to enjoy the fruits of this earth body and of the astral plane, of the Akashic records of our entire known reality of all the consciousness of the, of the all, all of the one, the entire conscious oneness. You have just as much permission and access to that as anyone else. No one has more power over you or more access to this realm. You are this realm. It is your larger body. So you simply are that realm. So it works for you and with you. You are also allowed to host your space, hold your space, and dominate the space. It is yours. Claim your space in your dream world. Stand your ground. And again, if you feel like you need that extra space, you are allowed to call on the crystalline Christ conscious energy, the pure consciousness of life itself as your defender to fortify your field in the dream world. But a lot of that can be done when you're awake to keep you nice and fortified and strong and you keep your, your, uh, your field nice and thick before you go to sleep. 
I think that's all. I think that's all I've got for us all. I'm going to also spray myself with a little bit of frankincense over here, around my crown, on the bottoms of my feet. There you go. Etherically, I'm sending that energy to you. Your mirror neurons just received that. Thank you all so much. It's truly an honor. I'm honored to be hosting this dojo for your soul growth. And thank you again for being such fabulous guardians in the world and taking on healing roles, taking on teaching roles, taking on guardianship roles in whatever way that you can as you age and you become more of an elder in our world and continuing to seek clarity about discomfort that you're having with a group. Because with the group energy, like I said, we can overpower anything that is single, singling you out. So let us know. Let us know what we can do for you as well. But a lot of this is your power and actualizing your power. Most of your body is not in your body. You are a much larger energy body. So if you could think of yourself as a 30-story tall light being that gets to walk around the earth with a few strides, you know, much bigger strides, you're going to go much bigger distances. This grandness of your of your soul is available to you. And I hope that this worked out. I hope that this helped. You're welcome, everyone. Thank you again for coming. Thank you to my friends who came and helped fill out the room and give me their energy as well for this. I love you guys all so much. I cannot wait for our next 18th, December 18th, where we're going to do the cleanse uh, uh, activation. And until then, let's get cleansing and also be sure that your liver and kidneys are getting that support that they need so they don't get all, you know, gum gummed up while you're doing the intestinal cleanse and the parasite cleansing that I would encourage you to do. And we're getting the, that water solution. If you don't have good water solution right now, we're going to make that the goal before I see you next that you're going to have your water solution figured out. And if not by then, we're definitely going to try and get that sorted out for you by then. I think that's it. Thank you all so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful night and a beautiful weekend. Of course, I'll see you all over social media. Feel free to message me whenever you want. And this recording is going to be reposted in the Patreon group for everybody. So I love you. Like I said, peace out. Have a great night. And until next time, enjoy your dreams. I certainly do. I certainly love hearing about them. So thank you for dreaming such a beautiful world into existence. You guys are awesome. Good night, everybody.